G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in over on the west side of the map. It is of course the one, the only, the Viper. He's going to be playing the Delhi. He's going to be playing in the color blue. And he's going to be going up against an opponent you might not have heard the name of before. And that is Keck W? Yes, this is Keck W, aka Marine Lord, who is currently sitting at rank number one on the ladder. He's actually on his Smurf account at the moment, which is rank number two on the ladder. So yes, this guy's quite decent, I guess you could say, uh, sitting at both rank one and rank two on the ladder. Uh, so playing under the the account name Keck W, he's going to be playing the Chinese in the color red. So we'll be taking a look at how he opens up with his build order. Going to be sending out six villagers over onto berries, bringing out all the sheep out here with him and sending an Imperial official out here. Going for the far side of the berries as well. Now you might be wondering, why the heck did he do that? And it's because he's got these one, two, three berry patches towards his town center that are small. And the current bug in the game, if you build a mill too close to these bad boys, it will just evaporate the bushes. So basically, he wants to keep all of these so he can actually use them. And subsequently, he has to make his mill a little bit further away. So that's exactly what's happening. Now, interesting to note, he's not actually going for a water start. He does have two villages over here on the lumber camp. But I suspect this is just going to be so he can actually afford to drop down a gold mine. He does have a gold, uh, or rather a, a mining camp. He does have a gold mine out here. So we'll take a look out, out over at his opponent's base, Viper. Uh, going for a double mosque opening here. This was popularized by the player Vortex uh, in the very first main event, or rather the very first game of the main event for Genesis. So Viper going to be starting off with seven villagers on food and then just chopping up the straggler trees next to his town center. He's got a, a herdable sheep that's about to come in out here as well. And just going to be scouting up his opponent's base. Hasn't really scouted the waterline here. Does know that it exists here. Going to be scouting over his opponent's side as well. Not really checking the resources that his opponent was on. So he didn't even see the lumber camp here. Uh, has no idea about this mill back here. So at the moment, he's just sort of thinking, all right, well, Marine Lord isn't going for the middle. So do I have to go for the middle? Is that the new meta that players just don't go for the middle? You know what? Back in my day, a month ago, if you didn't go for the middle, you are absolutely crazy on this map because this is Nagari. And as you guys can see, there are so many deep sea fish out here or deep water fish as they've been renamed. Towards the north, there is another pond. No deep water fish up here. And towards the south, there is also a pond. No deep water fish down here. So we spot over on Marine Lord's perspective. He's going to be coming past here as well. Double checking and not seeing any expansion out here either. So do we potentially have both players just ignoring the water? Marine Lord now going to be sending back his Imperial official just to drop off some uh, some of that gold, that juicy, juicy tax gold. You can see he does have a single villager out here on the mining camp. Going to be gathering up gold a little bit slowly. I'm curious what his build order is going to be. Still, he's got 11 villagers out here. Am I seeing that right? 11 villagers? That's a lot of villagers, Marine Lord. What are, you, what are you saving up for right now? Is there a famine going on in China or something? That is a lot of villagers. They are really stockpiling up the food. Um, but I suspect he's just trying to get up to the next age super duper quick. But I'm wondering where he's going from here. What he's, br what he's thinking. Uh, this villager is actually going to be coming forward. So I suspect probably dropping down a Barbican on the front line. Where's this Barbican going to be going? Maybe up here on top of the hill. Then he comes down here with an expansion with the TC. Maybe we see the Barbican even over on the shoreline potentially. Is that what we're going to see? No, we, we do see the Barbican on the hill. So this is probably the best play, uh, the correct play. He's going up with one villager as well. This is the right thing to do. He gets his age up uh, through relatively quick. He's playing China, so it's going to take half the time a normal uh, villager would take to build this up. But uh, obviously, he's got to be careful. If an enemy scout comes out and spots this, he's going to have to walk that back, do the walk of shame, probably even send out two villagers. But now, speaking of uh, walk of shame, look who's doing the walk of shame. It's Viper. Viper was actually heading out to the sacred site. Uh, I think probably going to be walling it up. We've seen uh, players walling up the sacred sites uh, when they're playing the Delhi. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him doing that. But he could have been using a spearman to do that. So maybe he was going to be doing a dock wall. Who knows? But uh, now his opponent is going to be spotting out um, that there is a spear coming as well as a scholar coming out as well. Uh, Scout going to be getting in on the action here. So going to have to be forced back here. And Viper going to be fighting on for dear life. Capture on the sacred site towards the north is going to begin. Viper has finished Sanctity, of course, and now going to begin researching efficient production as well as herbal medicine. Now, I will note that he has got both of those scholars out on the map. First village is going to be coming down here towards this pond. Second villager towards this pond. So I really like this play from Viper, going for a delayed double dock boom. Now, the, the interesting play about the double dock boom that is delayed is it gives you a bit more time to prepare. 
puts you in the second age, which means if your enemy tries to rush it down, and you've got to think about this, right? If, if your enemy doesn't go for a dock and you go for a dock, you're going to be down 150 uh, wood. You're going to be down 60 wood for every fishing boat you make, and you're probably going to make at least two. So you're down a huge amount of wood, and that gives them so much more resources to fight with, and then that gives them a significant advantage because they've already got a barracks that they've dropped down. It gives them, you know, spears that are going to come out. They're probably going to drop down a, a, an outpost on, on your dock as well. Almost 100% going to deny that dock, but obviously keep in mind he is playing the Delhi. Delhi fishing boats do have their own little attack, so that is always an option for him as well. But now I'm going to be picking up these sacred sites. Very smart from Viper. I do like this play. One of the things we have seen players do um, as Delhi is sort of go for that age one fish boom, but when they do that, then they neglect the sacred sites. Viper's just said, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do both at the same time. So Viper going for the double dock boom, also going for the uh, the dock in the middle and then sa securing the sacred sites as well. So I would love to see him begin to wall these up. You can see that Marine Lord is trying to deny this sacred site, but he's just going to be distracting Viper's APM here. But you know what? It's Viper. We're six minutes into the game. He's not going to be trying too hard, but uh, now we do see that landmark going to be coming up for Viper. Nine vi villagers just casually dropping down this landmark. So you know what? He's not in a rush. Surely not in a rush. Uh, but now we'll, we'll see his macro. I suspect that he's going to be going for a fast castle. I don't suspect we're going to be seeing too much else coming out from him. Um, so probably just looking to hold onto these sacred sites we do actually see a little bit of a uh, a little bit of an archer push towards the north a couple of archers down here towards the south viper could potentially be losing both of these sacred sites he needs to retain these long enough so that he can get enough gold to age up you can see he's got two villages here long distance mining the gold as well but uh now gonna be trying his best he's gonna be losing this one definitely i think that i saw five archers there yeah five archers down here so that is definitely going down obviously he's got the fishing boats in the middle these guys are going to be able to hold any potential attack here uh, at least for now uh, but towards the north, he is holding on to that one sacred site. And you can see just how much gold this is trickling in. You know, every second that goes past, that is going to continue trickling in that gold. And you can see he's already up to 630 gold holding this sacred site to the south. Probably going to uh, trickle in just a little bit more for him as well. Does he get one more trickle in? We'll have to wait. We'll have to see. Keep in mind, he's on that 630 at the moment. It looks like that site does get neutralized. Uh, so going to be sitting on 637 gold there. Uh, does lose that villager in the middle. And we'll take a look over at his opponent, uh, what Marine Lord is up to. So he's obviously dropped down that Barbican of the Sun. He's got out an advanced or a forward mill. No second town center, at least just not yet. Doesn't really seem to even be interested in going for a second town center at this stage. No dynasty that's been dropped down either at this point. So double mill, but no double landmark, no double TC, and a little bit of a push coming out here for Marine Lord. Uh, do we have a blacksmith that is going up? I don't see a blacksmith at all. So there's no signs at this stage. Oh, Scholar going to be going down. He's got a lot of HP on that Scholar. 130 HP. That is an awful lot of HP. But uh, you know what? I, I, for, for whatever reason, I say HP, and I always see in the comments on YouTube people saying HP. Is it not HP? Hit points? Should I just say hit points? Is that what you? Is that what the kids want me to say? Hit points? All right, I'll say hit points. Uh, 50 hit points. Um, uh, 155 hit points. It feels so unnatural. Just let me say HP. Just let me say it. But there it is now. Viper coming in with a house of learning. Going in for that fast castle as we expected. And this is... A, I guess this was the curious decision. Because as a marine lord, you should know that this is coming, right? Like, you should know that a fast castle is coming. And as China, y you can't deal with a fast castle from the Delhi Sultanate. It's just simply because of how strong men at arms are, as well as uh, the knights or the lances that come out. Primarily because of the honed blades. You're going to see it pop in right here. Viper's going to be... That's going to be his first research that he has. He's probably not going to get the uh, the reinforced foundations first. Almost certainly going to get honed blades here. Honed blades, rather. Uh, we'll keep holding on to this until we uh, actually see him manage to take it out. So I'm going to I'm gonna sort of sit here and, you know, bide my time, wait for it to come through. But you can see the fishing boats doing their best to defend in the middle here. So Viper keeping control of both ponds. One to the south, one to the middle. But uh, take a look up here towards the north. Got a little bit of an expansion coming out as well for his opponent, Marine Lord. And we'll have to check in on what he's doing. I'm still going to... I'm going to come back to Owned Blades. Don't you worry. We will not uh, forget about the story of the Owned Blade. Uh, but now Scout going to be spotting out his enemy. Uh, we've got the market coming through. I do expect that he's going to make an attempt at these next two sacred sites. And now we do see the Lancers coming out. These bad boys are going to be able to clean up any potential Age 2 threat. That is for sure. Uh, we'll check. We'll see. Owned Blades. Nope, not yet. Viper has forgotten his own blades. Okay, this is awkward. All right, don't no longer look at the House of Learning, all right? Viper would never forget such an important technology that would add three damage to his uh, knights or to his lances. That's a lot of damage, man. That is a lot of damage. Speaking of a lot of damage, the triple-double up towards the north here hasn't actually been scouted out by either player yet. At least Viper has scouted it, but it's been right on the edge. And obviously, uh, with the triple-double, with the way that sheeps work... Sheeps work? Sheeps? 
Drongo? Sheeps? It's a it's a sheep, mate. There's there is one sheep. There is twenty seven sheep. It is just sheep, mate. Get that right. Um, so <laughs> the, because the the way that sheep work, you can't actually uh, see them through the fog of war. So you actually have to spot them when you've got an active unit nearby. So right now, if you look at the perspective of Marine Lord, he sees these sheep, but as soon as they disappear out of the fog of war. They are not going to be there. They're not going to be present. You can see he's got the three sheep in the line of sight, but then they they disappear. Nobody knows that those secret sheep are there. So they are very secret sheep. Now we've got Horseman going to be coming out from Marine Lord. Also going up to the next stage, we'll take a look and see where his landmark is. It looks like he's gone for a little bit of a safer landmark. Still a single TC out of Marine Lord here. Now keep in mind, his enemy is actually on a uh, single TC, but he's on double, uh, double dock. And I tell you what, double dock and a TC is more than a TC. Uh, now, obviously, Marine Lord's got a dock himself, but uh, no fishing boat's going to be coming out at the moment. And Marine Lord's economy is looking a little bit curious. He does actually manage to snipe off that uh, that all-important uh, scholar up here towards the north. It is only 75 gold, but it's important to note uh, that he has delayed that, and that's what's so important. So now Viper is going to have to send out another scholar. We don't see any scholar coming out just yet. Has he? Is he rallying a scholar up here towards the north? He's got the Dome of the Faith. There's that scholar. That scholar is coming up here towards the north. Going to look to recapture that sacred site. Get that trickle of gold coming back on in. And uh, we'll take a look now at what Viper is researching. He's getting his plus two, or he's, he's getting his plus one upgrade. I apologize. Plus one upgrade. Um, and uh, have, is, is he going for like a fast Imperial here? What, what, is, what is going on? He's, he's got a lot of resources in the bank, but he's not spending them. He's not dropping any extra barracks. He's not training any extra units. He's getting the veteran upgrades for his horsemen, but is he going fast Imperial? Is he doing it again? Is this two for one? Is this Viper going two for one fast imp right now? Lancer going to be coming out, going up against the Lancer of his opponent. We've got double Lancer sieves right here. Viper does actually manage to scout out this dock towards the north as well. So we'll see how he reacts to that. We still have this uh, this research coming through. Could be getting this one as well, but uh, not yet. And looks like we've got the Scholar down towards the south. Going to get picked up by Marine Lord. Marine Lord doing a great job of just, you know, forcing him to delay or waste time with these. And we got a demo ship that did come out in the middle. Marine Lord being pretty successful there. Another knight around the back of his base. And we'll take a look over at Marine Lord's line of sight. See what he sees. No further any, uh, no further ships coming out of the dock just yet. Now, this is not a very economic game, I would say. Uh, neither player has opted for that second town center just yet. Uh, no stone actually gathered up for Marine Lord at this stage. So, uh, oh, look at this fight towards the north here. We've got double lance. We've got a couple of archers out. These guys don't have their plus ones. No upgrades yet either for Marine Lord. Has he got any... He's got the blacksmith out. He's got an upgrade coming through now. It's plus one attack, melee attack. Going to help out with his lances, but ideally he'd want to get plus one defense. That way it really helps out with everything. And that's exactly what he's going to be getting, but he's actually going to be going for the iron undermesh uh, rather than the fitted leather work. So going to be taking a little bit more damage there for the moment. But uh, now down towards the south of Viper's base. There is action all over this map as Viper comes in at lightning speed, chops in this direction, hits the Lancer when it runs behind him. And now again, Marine Lord looking to neutralize. And there is action absolutely going all over this map. Viper was slowly doing damage to this. But now we actually see the Bakla coming out for Viper. Going to be able to put the nail in the coffin on this water. Uh, we actually have a war junk going to be coming out in response. Do we see a second Bakla being produced? Not yet. But obviously Viper is going to be able to pull fishing boats if he wants to. Okay, so you can pull fishing boats and deal with a backler. A war junk should beat a backler in a head-on uh, discussion. I, I, I want to say, not, not a discussion, obviously, but, uh, you know, a fight. More lances and more knights all over the map. Viper still yet to... Is he yet to click up? Yet to click up. So not going for that fast Imperial just yet. Was I zoomed in all that time? I, you know what? The zoom in this game, they, they've actually done really well fixing the zoom in this game. I don't even realize that I'm zoomed in half the time. Uh, now towards the uh, center of the map, we've got the backlog that's going to look to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of a spin to win. Viper managing to spin it around, firing off the one shot, the second shot. You see how beautifully he's doing that. He's going to have to fall back though. That war junk is not only going to be sitting under the influence of the dock, it's also going to be significantly stronger when it comes to its broadside attacks. You can see the damage there. 50 attack on the ballista compared that to the 120 of his opponent. So he's going to need to heal this up with a couple of fishing boats. Otherwise, he will lose this. I think a longer range as well. Five tiles of range versus the 6.5 tiles of range. So you can actually see Viper bringing in the fishing ships and they're also getting shots off as well, I think, behind this. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, more villagers now. Could to be going down for Viper. Viper, got to be really careful here. Oh, he's got a second town center. I didn't even see this. I thought this was a trading post. I thought it was a trading post. Viper dropping a second town center when I wasn't looking the sneaky dog. Jeez, Louise. Backlight in the middle. Going to be able to defend this war junk. 
War Junk was just getting pulled back as we did tap away. And Viper going to be doing his best to try and chase down the army of his enemy. You can see there's no spears in here, so going to have a pretty easy time. Once he does manage to get on top of it, Viper going to be doing his best. We'll take a look exactly how he does it. Beautiful micro there from Viper, pulling that single knight backwards. Keep in mind, he does have the scholars. He's got plenty of, uh, of religious units that are going to be able to heal that up. If it did manage to get away, it did not. So uh, Marine Lord definitely going to be having a difficult time as we move towards this, this mid game. And the War Junk will go down 23 HP. Oh no, the, 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 it misfired. He misfired with his back. Close, you gotta be so careful with that. Okay, it does manage to go down. War Junk does go down. An explosive ship just gonna be coming out in response. And look at the army numbers for each player on both of their respective sides. Viper up here with the eight lancers down towards the south. His opponent with six cleaning up more and more of the military. And it is really a lancer off at this stage. You can see why these guys didn't go for more town centers. I mean, well, Viper did make that second town center, but still, like, it, th these guys are just going full all army at this point. Uh, let's take a look at the score lead. Viper is actually pulling ahead quite far. Uh, now, keep in mind, Viper, I would say, is known as a greedy player. He is able to sort of push himself to the limits or push his sieve to the limits, okay? And as long as he doesn't die, he's going to win. That's the whole idea. That's the way he plays... And personally, I love that style. That is the exact way I've always tried to play. But I'm just obviously, you know, not as talented, not as good as Viper. So I really admire watching him play uh, because he is literally playing as greedy as possible without dying. That that is the that is the key. So scouting is incredibly important. Now moving towards his opponent's wood line. There's a there's just a random sheep out here, and Viper now going to be on top of that wood line. Picking up plenty of villagers. Two going to be going down. Three going to be going down. Four going to be going down. No textiles on these villagers. Does Viper have his textiles? Yes, he does. He's been under her constant harassment throughout this game. There's going to be a lot of villagers that do get, go down there. Viper going to be forced away. We'll check on the upgrades. We've got plus one on either one. Uh, no plus one there for Viper. And now we see that second war junk going to be coming out. And Backler has got to be careful. The Backler has got to be careful. It managed to get away on 25 HP. And look at it scoot away with that extra 0.25 movement speed over its opponent. And uh, now Viper continues to harass his enemy back towards this wood line. His opponent is aware of it and going to continue to uh, keep these villagers idled. 16 villagers belled up in that town center at the moment. And uh, Viper just really getting pushed off here on the middle. Uh, it's so important to really just get out. Even just one uh, fishing boat up here on this end is going to deny any sort of dock from his opponent. But now we've got some night on night action and Viper doing his best to try and get the, the numbers advantage on his opponent. But it looks like... It looks like Marine Lord is probably going to be cleaning this up despite the low HP on some of his units and manages to survive with about five of those there and look towards the base and Viper actually getting attacked by a couple wolves getting in on the action as well. That's not what you want. That is not what you want to see. The body infantry doing their best. Look at the Viper trying to micro, but the, the wolves getting in and the one Lancer in the back manages to survive against those wolves. They are so, so pesky. You got to be real careful of those, especially in the late game. You know, when, you, when you've got a thousand alarms going off at the same time and those guys are just out and about, you know, attacking villagers and whatnot, it's infuriating, man. It is infuriating. Viper still yet to have those plus one upgrades in melee attack. Still waiting on those uh, those all important. You see Bloomery coming through right now. He does have plus two eventually coming through. Has he got any more blacksmiths? He does have this blacksmith down towards the south. Still no fitted leather work coming in for Viper. This is this is getting very tough for him right now. Another three minutes until that fitted leather work is coming in. Not a lot of scholars inside these uh, these mosques. He is picking up those those relics. We do hear him doing that up towards I guess towards the north. Is it? Yeah, it's over towards the north. That mo that scholar going to be coming in at light speed. By the way, check that guy out. We are just going to follow him for a little bit. I know there's a fight going on, but there's something more important to show you, and it is this guy. Look at him. Imagine getting into a fight with that guy. You'd have a, a relic imprint on your face. It'd be disgusting, but I tell you what, it would be absolutely golden. That's probably the best way to say it. Now going to be chasing away his enemy from his base, and I think Viper's doing a great job. You can see he's up by about 400 points. If we do a stock take, we see that Viper's got the two docks. He's got the two town centers. He's looking very good. He's sitting on 56 villages at the moment, so he's, he's not as high as I thought he would be. At least... I, I don't know what the context of that should be. 57 for his enemy. Marine Lord doing a pretty decent job of taking out villagers himself. So I tell you what, this is actually not looking the best for Viper right now. I thought he was in a bit more of a lead than what he actually is. Four lances towards the south, three lances towards the north. How many lances do we have reinforcing? Not a whole lot. And very interestingly, it's about like both players have just agreed not to make any clock tower springholds. Speaking of clock tower springholds, what's that Imperial official doing? More lances now going to be coming in for Marine Lord here. 
And uh, Marine Lord going to be pushing forward on water. But take a look at this. The Backlord is going to be healing up their ships. Marine Lord losing water once again here. Dock down to half HP. Viper could look to push on that. Village is going to be going down here towards the north. We do see that one going in. Second Village is down towards the south. They've got to be careful. These guys are all stacked together. And Viper tries to hold on for dear life. Despite being up a 1,000 points in score. I don't know where the majority of this score difference is. We'll take a look over at his perspective. Because right now, I tell you what. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's where the majority of the score is. Eight Lancers now heading into the, the, his base. And look, this is where it really starts to look difficult for, for uh, Marine Lord because there's so many... There it is! That's why it's looking so difficult. Marine Lord taps out. Viper takes the victory, proving that Delhi are actually quite strong and you don't always need to start with water. I hope you guys have enjoyed this cast and I will catch you guys in the next one. Check out Viper's link. I'll leave it in the description and in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching.